In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my entire live stream setup from the software that I use to the hardware and everything in between, give you some tips and tricks to make it hopefully a relatively smooth experience for you if you're just getting started. I do use a Sony a7 III that I'm shooting on right now. If you wanna see a more in-depth full setup guide on that and live streaming, well, check out the video out there for you. But I'm gonna keep this video relatively simple and just show you my overall process as well as some of the things that I use to keep it kind of nice and flowy and mainstream. Give it that professional look. So I'll be using the Elgato 4K capture card today and you can get away with using a webcam for your streams, of course, something, nothing too expensive but I'm going to be using my Sony a7 III with the Elgato 4K capture card and I also have the Elgato Stream Deck. That's this little guy here and all this really is is basically a little keyboard that's programmable and customizable to allow you to do awesome things on the fly to give you that really professional look just like that. And guys, if you haven't seen one of my videos before, my name is Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials. So if you do enjoy this content and you like this video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Anyways, let's dive in and look at what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and press one simple button and that's gonna shift over and give us a different view. And this is the beauty of the OBS software. It's gonna let you either live stream or do video capture. So it's great for tutorials as well. There's lots of different applications. You can do game streaming with it. You can do live streaming on Twitch, on YouTube. It's literally endless. Combine that with the Elgato Stream Deck and the sky's the limit at what you can do. It's such a versatile system here that we've got going. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with OBS, but it's a great software for streaming and bringing everything into one program. And I'm gonna assume that you have a little bit of knowledge, so I'm not gonna get into too much of the technical aspects of it, but today we're gonna to show you how to take the OBS system and integrate that with your Elgato Stream Deck. And I'm gonna show you my setup and then just a brief overview of how to kind of program that in there. But let's kind of jump in and show you what that looks like. I wanted to note as well that by no means do you actually need the Stream Deck. It's a fantastic tool and a luxury, but not completely necessary. If you're just getting started in live streaming and you don't have a huge budget, it's totally fine to get used to the software before you start investing. Here we've got our two programs. Up here we've got our OBS software on the left and our Stream Deck software on the right. And like I said, the Stream Deck is completely customizable with different buttons. And as you can see, I've got them all set up for my live stream here in my profile. And I'm just gonna go through quickly and show you what each and every button does and how seamless and quickly you can transition your live stream or in this case, your tutorial for whatever you're looking for. So at the top left here, we've got with just one press of a button, our screen capture. And this is just looking at our computer if we're doing a tutorial and whatnot. And the button beside it, I can just throw up a graphic, in this case, a like and subscribe button. And to the bottom of that, we've got our ACAM, which is our Sony a7 III. You could make it your mobile phone. You could make it your webcam or whatever you have. And that's just gonna be able to easily and kind of effortlessly drift back and forth and if you are a gamer, you're gonna kind of want this look, which is more of a tutorial kind of view where you've got your little view in the corner, but you can still see what's going on on the screen. So we've also got other options here. As you can see to the right of that, I've got my CPU mic. I can mute that and then bring that back on. So if you have different audio sources and you wanna take one off or put one on, well, you can do that with the touch of a button as well. The Stream Deck is just very versatile in that you can program it with endless possibilities, even multi-features. Basically, you press one button and it's gonna do several actions. It's really good for that as well. But with one touch of the button, once again, we've got my starting soon. And on the bottom right, I've got my music setup. So if I've just started my live stream and I wanna, I gotta get everything kind of sorted out, well, there it is. And of course, I've got my Be Right back and my thanks for watching scene and with the press of the button as well it's going to take away my music and then i can hit it and go right back to my a cam my b cam or my screen capture so a couple other ones i've got a beat button set up in case things get out of control and i just want to and that's kind of neat that's something called voice mod and again you can 
manipulate your voice and all sorts of things. I don't really do that too much, but there's a lot of people who are really creative with that. And you can set it to anything that you want. There's a million options out there. I'm just showing you the really, like a lot of the really basic stuff. And then above that, we've got a pretty much kill all audio button. And that's for kind of worst case scenario, something's going wrong or who knows what. I don't really use that one too much and I don't really have any other things that I really need at this point. So like I said, I like to keep it really simple and just kind of go back and forth between my ACAM and then my, my screen capture, or in this case, both. So it just keeps people engaged because as you know, in this day and age, people have the attention span of a mosquito or a goldfish. So you gotta keep people engaged. You gotta keep them guessing. You gotta keep that, that brain activated. So this is a good way to, you know, just keep engaged and keep things interesting and use your creativity to, you know, have different uh, scenes that pop up in different graphics and stuff. And that's why it's really good. So that's just my really, really simple setup with the Elgato Stream Deck. And let's jump in and show you how you can easily program that using our OBS software and working seamlessly with the Stream Deck is just two minutes, literally. So let's have a look at some profiles here. Um, I'm not gonna go into exactly what these all mean. I'm gonna assume that you know what the scenes and the sources. If not, check out a tutorial on that. But let's create a new scene in this case. We're gonna call it scene three, and we're gonna click on that. And the screen goes black right away because we don't have a source. So we're gonna create a source. And we've got lots to choose from. We've got audio input capture. We've got our game capture. We can choose an image, a text. We can choose our video capture device like our camera, but I'm gonna use media source in this case. And I'm gonna click on that button and let's call it clip two. Okay, so there we go. We've got our clip two here and it's asking for our file. So we actually have to have some kind of media file to throw in here. And I do have a few ready. I've got a folder called streaming stuff and I've got a couple of those um, clips that you saw, my thanks for watching and my Be Right Back clip. So let's use our Be Right Back clip. When I click on that, it's gonna know that it's at that location and I'm just gonna press okay. And as you can see here, it's a different size from what we're used to seeing here. Our canvas size is in 4K and this is obviously in 1080. So what I'm gonna do is just size that for the sake of time here. So now we've resized that and now let's have a look at how to actually program that into a button. So we set up our scene over here, scene three, and we know that when we click on that scene, it's gonna to go to that Be Right Back clip. So what do we need to do? We need to go over to our stream deck and let's create a new profile. Because this profile is completely full, we're gonna create a new profile. When we click on profile, you can see here that my stream deck here has gone completely blank and there's no buttons programmed. So we're gonna have to go ahead and choose a new button to program. And there again, there's endless options over here from game capture to mixer to chat. And in this case, we're gonna use an OBS studio button. We're gonna check out scene and I'm gonna drag that scene over into a button here. And then it has appeared on my stream deck. We have some options down here. We're gonna call it BRB for be right back. And we're gonna go down to scene and actually link that with the OBS file, which is already there. And I recommend you do everything in OBS first and then go over to your stream deck after so it's seamless. So in this case, we can see that when that pop down menu pops up, we've got our scene three there. We click on it just like that and it's been linked. So when we press our button on our stream deck, we should go right over to our scene just like that. And it's literally that simple. So with just a few clicks of the button, we can program our entire stream deck and you can be as creative as you want. And again, you can use multi-functions. You can have a graphic pop up and post something in your live chat at the same time. You can do delays in between things. It's incredibly versatile and flexible. So we're not gonna get into all the things that you can do today. It's just that simple to program it. But let me know if you want a specific tutorial or if you're stuck on something because it can be a little bit tricky sometimes with some troubleshooting, trying to get exactly what you're looking for. So it's just really trial and error, but if I can help, drop it down in the comments. And guys, I wanna just kinda leave it at that. If you like this video, if, uh, if you found it helpful, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.